menstrual irregularities uh, uh, are uh, is, is an important subject from the point of view uh, that many women at one or the other point of their reproductive life they experience some uh, issues, some sometimes some delay, some sometimes an excess of uh, uh, menstrual bleeding or uh, some kind of irregularity. Uh, in most of the instances, that irregularity would be self-correcting, but uh, then there are uh, in, uh, reasons, there are conditions which need attention and uh, more than uh, conservative uh, uh, attitude and they would require certain medication or procedures as well. About menstrual irregularities, how it is now classified, although this classification is not new, entirely new, but it has been there for the last four or five years. But still, uh, I think that uh, we need to adapt this, which has been now recommended by the International Federation of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Uh, this is uh, the outline of my presentation. Uh, just a couple of slides, if you want, about menstrual physiology. And then menstrual irregularities are now lumped in one heading, which is AUB, and that is abnormal uterine bleeding. And uh, there is uh, an acronym which has been devised by FIGO uh, for uh, easy uh, to remember kind of style. Uh, uh, we we'll come to that later. And then diagnosing abnormal uterine bleeding, medical management and the role of progestogens in abnormal bleeding. If you look at this graph, you would appreciate that the number of follicles which are present in the ovaries, uh, they are responsible for uh, the menstrual cycle. And uh, also, uh, their dwindling number with passage of years uh, gives rise to uh, some irregularities or some delays. At the time of not birth, as a matter of fact, actually at the 20th week of intrauterine gestation, maximum number of oocytes actually they are uh, deposited in the ovaries. By the time of birth, many of them have already been lost. And uh, as menarche uh, comes around the age of 12, 12 to 14, uh, further reduction in uh, the number of uh, uh, eggs has taken place. And with passage of years, particularly closing uh, after 31 years, the decline is quite rapid. And uh, about 40, one of the reasons for menstrual irregularities or delays is the aging of oocytes and uh, uh, small number of oocytes which is left in the ovaries. Now, previously we have been, and still we use the terms menorrhagia, polymenorrhea, polymenorrhagia, etc. But now these terms have become redundant and have been replaced by the new nomen nomenclature under the heading of abnormal uterine bleeding. But we will have to qualify what abnormal uterine bleeding means. Now, this is uh, something which has been uh, designed for uh, remembering the whole thing easily. Uh, you can see the uh, diagram here that it shows uh, the palm and there is a coin. Uh, it is for the uh, acronym palm coin. Uh, if you look at on this side of the uh, reasons of abnormal bleeding, it can be polyp, adenomyosis, leomyoma, which is fibroids, and malignancy and hyperplasia that makes palm. B A L M palm, and on this side there are coagulopathy, ovulatory dysfunctions, endometrial causes, iatrogenic, and not yet classified, and that makes it not exactly coin O I N. So, but it is easier to remember, and from this acronym you would uh, you can appreciate that uh, the abnormal bleeding will fall into one of these categories. Now, if we group them into still lesser areas, there could be hormonal problems and there could be structural problems and in a small minority, particularly in younger girls, there could be hemostatic problems. So hormonal, structural and hemostatic problems and we'll have to identify to which category the uh, problem exists and then manage the cause of that. 
If we look at one of these examples of a 27-year-old uh, woman who is Gravida 1 Para 1 and she presents with prolonged bleeding for the last uh, two years, uh, heavy menstrual bleeding, then if you look at these options, what would you do? Obtain a detailed history or start giving a oral contraceptive pill, request for an ultrasound and schedule for a hysterectomy. Obviously at this young age, hysterectomy is out. Ultrasound possibly yes, high dose of OCP is only after you have diagnosed it. But obviously uh, a detailed history is important in which various uh, areas of history need to be elucidated about the nature of bleeding, related symptoms, family history, etc. And then physical examination because we must not deviate in spite of uh, very easy availability of ultrasound from history, proper history and physical examination because many of the causes will be identified at this time and of course investigations uh, complete blood count. Now again, what of these four options we will do, we will obtain a detailed history. So far as investigations are concerned, imaging techniques, there are multiple imaging techniques are available, but the ultrasound is uh, convenient, cheaper and is uh, essentially very informative so far as menstrual abnormalities are concerned. In these three uh, pictures you can see a fibroid, uh, a polyp here and uh, excessive uh, growth of the endometrium and kind of hyperplasia. Now in this particular patient, uh, uh, further tests uh, if required can be in the shape of hysteroscopy but only if uh, ultrasound uh, is inconclusive and in this patient what turned out that it was a small submucous fibroid which was removed hysteroscopically. Now this is one case in which hormonal treatment was not required. You see, so this was a structural problem because there was a fibroid. Now we take the example of another woman who is 51 years old, we have a 3 pair of 2 and she has had continuous bleeding for the last 10 days at the age of 51. Now menstrual history uh, was not significant except for that that she had skipped periods in the previous year. Uh, her uh, body mass index was not excessively large, 35, which is not too large. In medical history, she was uh, mildly hypertensive and was, which was managed on a single drug therapy. Pelvic examination and imaging studies did not reveal anything abnormal. And now consider what would be wrong with this uh, uh, patient. At this age, at the age of 51 or 52, what we need to particularly remember and uh, need to uh, rule out is uh, malignancy of the endometrium, which uh, the incidence of which starts to increase around this age and therefore endometrial biopsy is an important investigation which should be carried out. Now, if you look at this uh, table, you would appreciate that with passing years and with advancing age, the incidence of endometrial carcinoma increases, whereas in adolescents, obviously, it's very small and with later reproductive age, it increases uh, uh, substantially, although even in the exact numbers, it still remains quite small. Indication for endometrial biopsy uh, for menstrual irregularity or abnormality would be uh, bleeding in a postmenopausal woman, or if on pap smear we find that there are endometrial cells and also in patients who have, uh, who are taking tamoxifen because of uh, uh, breast cancer after the, which is the maintenance therapy afterwards and if they contain of bleeding. And also uh, again in most of the women who are beyond 52 years of age and still are menstruating endometrial biopsy or before that actually if you would evaluate by ultrasound it will be important uh, uh, to assess the thickness of the endometrium. Now in this patient after endometrial biopsy the report was disordered on asynchronous proliferative endometrium. It is because of hormonal again, hormonal uh, imbalance because that is what is indicated. Ovulatory dysfunction at this stage as I said earlier because of uh, the remaining smaller number of uh, uh, oocytes and uh, because of the age, uh, their, uh, their period of maturation and their release that is affected and because of that, uh, the menstrual cycle gets uh, 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 affected. Now, uh, this...
This diagram is shown that if there is absent or delayed follicular development because of there is no ovulation, no corpus luteum, no progesterone, no stability phase, and therefore unopposed estrogen would be there, and uh, after a little, some time there would be an inevitable breakthrough bleeding, which was probably the case in uh, 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 the situation in this particular patient. And this patient comes in the category of ovulatory dysfunction on the point side. Uh, this is what we have achieved on uh, uh, ruling out malignancy and we have kind of confirmed the diagnosis of uh, ovulatory dysfunction. Appropriate treatment uh, in this uh, patient would be to, uh, to give progesterone because it is continuous to long exposure to estrogen which has uh, led to this uh, bleeding and therefore uh, 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 to compensate for the lacking progestational uh, support or progestational effect on the endometrium, it will be a good choice to uh, uh, give progesterone. And uh, the, the kind of progesterone that we, we select should be such which would uh, uh, not uh, give rise to adverse metabolic or cardiovascular effects. We take an example of a third patient who is uh, 34 years of age, she is uh, uh, nulliparous and uh, for three weeks he has had heavy uh, menstrual bleeding uh, which was preceded uh, by amenorrhea, period of amenorrhea or pelvic ultrasound which is uh, now uh, uh, widely available and you can easily make a diagnosis of polycystic ovaries which is uh, shown here. Uh, now if the diagnosis is that, what would you give? You would give some preparation of metroxyprogesterone like Caprovera, combined oral contraceptive pill, Tranexamic acid, which is transamine or other uh, such preparations, or high doses of oral progestogens. Just uh, consider your answer. Now, in managing this acute bleeding, which is there, the the points to be remembered are about volume, about uh, the effect of that blood loss in terms of development of anemia, and also that how would this bleeding be controlled by antifibrinolytic agents like tranexamic acid or NSCIs like constant fort or hormonal uh, support would be given. Now there are multiple options which you could give it under such circumstances like you can give high doses of uh, estrogens like conjugated equine estrogens, uh, the preparation which is available is premarin or there is another preparation by the name of progynova, you could give those. Uh, on the other hand, a simple and uh, readily available preparation is the oral, combined oral contraceptive pill. You could give it in higher doses, starting with say, uh, uh, like Famila 28, which has this formulation which has been given here, ethanyl estradiol plus norgestrel or norethindrol. And uh, you give uh, one tablet four times a day for a few days and then uh, with stepping down dosage of one tablet three times and then one tablet twice a day and then one tablet daily kind of maintenance. Now this will, uh, what it will do is that it will uh, 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 take over the, uh, the endometrial formation function and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the bleeding which was continuously there after long exposure to estrogens, now that, that will be brought under control in this session. In acute episodes, of course, nowadays, uh, transamic acid like uh, the uh, transamine is uh, quite commonly and widely used, which is the dose is 1 gram 8 or 6 hourly, which is 500 milligram capsule, 2 capsules, 3 to 4 times a day. In addition, of course, if uh, the complaint also is of pain, NSAIDs can be given. Uh, but there is growing uh, uh, opinion about uh, the uh, use of uh, progestogens which uh, have been shown to be uh, quite effective in treating heavy menstrual bleeding and also can be used in acute episodes of abnormal uterine bleeding. So therefore, in this patient, out of those four options which were given earlier, combined oral contraceptive would be a good one and to uh, forestall that episode of excessive bleeding, uh, trianexamic acid uh, should be given, whereas, of course, high doses of progesterone can be also utilized. Now, the working diagnosis in this patient was polycystic ovaries, the incidence of which is shown in this diagram in that uh, 
with menstrual abnormalities, you will come across patients maximum in the, between the ages of 26 to 34, which is 25 to 35 years of age group. Maximum number is that with passage of uh, uh, years and with advancing age, the manifestations of polycystic ovaries with regard to menstrual abnormalities, they become less frequent. The treatment goals in polycystic ovaries are multiple. And uh, they would also depend upon whether contraception is required or not. So therefore, if uh, the, the desire of regular periods, the desire for contraception, and the desire for pregnancy, these are three options which will be uh, kept in view while prescribing uh, various treatments. For example, if contraception is required, then oral contraceptive pill is uh, very convenient, uh, effective, and cheap uh, 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 prescription which should be uh, given to the patient but on the other side and similarly for uh, 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 maintaining or bringing about uh, regular cycles again contraceptive pill is uh, an eminent choice. On the other hand since polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome or disease or uh, condition is also associated with uh, infertility and many of these girls they are desirous of having children uh, in that case progesterone is uh, the uh, obvious choice. And uh, initially, it can be given to regulate the cycle on uh, a longer basis, that is about for 21 days. But uh, one of the important uh, methods of uh, giving progestogens in these patients would be administering progesterone from days 16 to 25 for 10 days, which will regulate the cycle also. And in case the patient becomes pregnant, the pregnancy will not be adversely affected. As a matter of fact, it will be supplemented. Progestogens, uh, they, they help endometrium to grow and uh, they, all, uh, they also help the endometrium to, shed, to get shed off in an organized fashion. And uh, the oral progestogen, diprogesterone in that case, is uh, uh, again a very convenient and very uh, appropriate choice. And as I said earlier, in this kind of treatment of uh, cycle day 60 to 25 administration of uh, progestogens, uh, is, uh, can be administered for a lot of uh, periods of uh, uh, duration. Uh, the type of uh, progesterone that we give for uh, menstrual abnormalities also is important because we need to select that progesterone which is not likely to have any potential adverse effects like metabolic effects or cardiovascular effects. The additional benefits of progestogens are that uh, progestogens, they protect against development of hypoplasia and endometrial carcinoma. They also provide luteal support uh, for early pregnancy and as I said earlier that if we give a patient is the virus of having pregnancy, it will have a salutary effect. And uh, they can be given to those patients in, which, in whom estrogens are uh, contraindicated. So therefore, if a conception control is not an issue and conception is something which is desired, then progesterone cyclically given are the obvious choice. So therefore, the 34-year-old unigravida woman with three weeks of heavy menstrual bleeding following a period of amenorrhea, which would be quite the presentation of a patient with polycystic ovaries, this kind of uh, management would be appropriate. I'll just skip through this, I'll not. In summary, you see, we need to remember that PathPoint is now the new system of uh, 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 naming various menstrual abnormalities and uh, I would uh, suggest strongly to uh, the uh, colleagues who practice obstetrics and gynecology, most, most of the uh, uh, doctors, uh, female doctors, that uh, they, they uh, and those who are practicing obstetrics and gynecology, that they make themselves familiar with this terminology. And uh, in the management, what need, is needed is that we need to rule out structural abnormalities. In those patients in whom malignancy can be a likelihood in older, uh, belonging to the older uh, age group, uh, malignancy should be ruled out. And uh, in younger patients, uh, uh, in uh, uh, patients who are in their early teens and if they have wrong readings and they sure. That is a vignette that I missed. In those, uh, uh, sometimes there is a blood dyspraxia that if that is ruled out, then ovulatory dysfunction is most likely the, the cause and that should be managed. 
And this algorithm is uh, further elaborated here that non-structural uh, reasons for abnormal neutron cleaning if they are endometrial, then tron examic acid or NSCIDs, and if it is ovulatory dysfunction, then the choices are between giving estrogens for acute episodes, progestogens for long periods of time, and, and also combined oral contraceptive pills, particularly if contraception is desired. The take home points are that cause should be evaluated, whether it is structural or it is hormonal, and then the acute cases can be treated looking at the volume of bleeding and if there is any resulting anemia or if continuous bleeding. And when we plan the management, the type of management and the medicine that we are going to give, that will depend upon desire for fertility, desire for contraception, and the choice should be which would minimize health risks. Thank you very much.